Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. I want to spend a couple minutes going through some other really important library module functions that we haven't gone through yet. And the first one is the renaming option. And we can get there by going to Library and hitting Rename, which is right here, or we can also click F2. And you guys might notice that F2 is actually the exact same uh, shortcut key for renaming files and folders inside of Windows, inside of the operating system as well. So it's really easy to remember. So make any selection of images that you guys want. I'm just going to select this one image right here, and I'm going to hit F2 to pull up my renaming dialog box. Now from here, let's actually go through and teach you guys how to set up a custom uh, setting for your renaming systems. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this custom settings here, we're going to hit edit, and we're going to create a new setting. Now this looks kind of confusing, but this is how it works. At the very top, we see this example right here. And this example is just telling us how this uh, file naming sequence is going to look like when based on the options that we choose here. So it just gives us a live example of what it's going to be. Below that we have this kind of proprietary code for naming, for numbering. And it looks complicated, but don't worry, you guys don't have to actually modify this or edit this directly. This just changes depending on what items you're selecting here. So for example, we have custom text that starts off the file name. And what that does is it allows me to actually type in custom text when we actually go and rename the image. So it appears right here, if I hit cancel, this is the custom text that appears before whatever uh, image number is added onto it. Let's go back to the edit. So then after the custom text that I type in, I have a sequence. And the sequence is just a numbering sequence. And this starts with the number one. Now we can modify this however we like. So let's start modifying now. We'll just set up a different example so you guys can see how it works. What we're going to do is clear this out altogether. We're just going to select everything and hit delete. And so we just have underscore JPEG because if there's no, we have nothing in there right now. So if we just renamed it, it would just be underscore JPEG basically. So what we're going to do first is we'll start with say the file name. And so the file name is, well actually let's do something completely different. Let's do a folder name. So the folder name is 00originals. And so that's what it's going to start the image rename with is that folder name. Then let's add, say, something like a, let's add a date to it. So let's put date, um, and we'll go with the, let's go with the year, month, day. And it inserts that right afterwards. Then let's go to the end of this, and let's add some sort of a sequence. So we're going to add a sequence that begins with, let's add a sequence that begins with five zeros. And there's a reason for that, actually, or four zeros. There's actually a reason why you'd want these to start with different numbers. Uh, and the reason for that is basically a lot of different systems, file naming systems, confuse numbers. So like for example, it would confuse the placement of number one, zero, with number one. Because they both start with the number one, and then it's one of them is followed by a zero, it would put the one zero in front of one. Even though one zero is supposed to be ten, and one is supposed to be one, and it's supposed to be the other way around. So if you add a zero in front of those the renaming sequences, then file systems can do a better job of organizing it and they'll actually get it right. So everything starts with 0001, 0002, 0003, and then you know when it gets to the hundreds, it's 0100, and that way those file systems can organize them properly. So because we're typically delivering around 800 to 1,000 images, we always go with the 301 sequence, so we go with the 1,000 sequence, and, then, uh, and that's sufficient. All right, so let's say we also want to add in, we'll add in a metadata copyright on the end of it as well. So now we have this custom sequence of, of different options that we have for our file name. And you'll notice that they're all connected to each other. But what if I want them to be spaced? Well, all I need to do is type in whatever I want here. So any characters that I type in will be inserted in those locations into this re, uh, file name. So for example, if I go between folder name and date and I add an underscore, then it's going to put an underscore between those, those two options with every single image. If I put a dash here between the date and between the sequence, it adds a dash there. If I add a star here, it's going to add, or an ampersign, it's going to add an ampersign or a star between those images. Now, you'll notice that with an, uh, a star, this is actually an illegal character. And so we previously talked about in the uh, preferences, when you reach illegal characters, you have the option to replace it with something else. And we chose that we wanted to replace illegal characters with a dash. And so right now it's taking that illegal character and it's actually replacing it with a dash when it actually gets here. So let's just say dash instead of that. We won't use any illegal characters. All right, so when we hit done right now, or actually let's save this out as an example preset. So we're going to save this current settings a new preset and we're just going to say test because we're not going to keep this at all. I'm going to hit create and now we have a new preset. I'm going to go to done. And then when we hit test, it now doesn't give us the option to do custom text because this test preset 
doesn't have custom text selected. It's just going to use the file, the folder name, the date, a sequence, and the copyright. So that doesn't require anything. All we need to do is specify the starting number, and that's just going to be the starting number of the sequence. So maybe for some reason I'd want the starting number to be 100. So it'll start with 0, 100, and then it'll go up from there. So we'll just put 1, or you can put 0 as well as a starting number. It doesn't really matter. Actually, I don't think it lets you start with 0. No, we have to start with 1. So now let's create a custom renaming preset, which is actually something we might use. I'll show you guys the one that we actually use for our studio. So I'm going to go back to Edit, and we're going to go to this uh, little code area right here, and we're going to take everything and delete it. Now what I'm going to do is I want to enter custom text, because with every job I like to enter in you know, the name of the couple, the location that we shot at, and you know, that kind of stuff, uh, what type of photography it was in that custom text. So the first thing I'm going to put in is the insert custom text. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dash because I want everything to be separated by a dash. And then we're going to add the sequence 0001 item right here by selecting it and then hitting insert. This is the exact file naming system that we use inside of our studio. So I'm going to set this up as a new preset and we're going to save this as typical rename. We'll say preset and hit create. All right, so now I'm going to hit done. We have typical name, rename preset selected. And then what we would do is just type in our custom text, whatever that is. So for example, if I was at Las Vegas shooting something, I would say Las Vegas, and I put a dash. I always put a dash between all my words. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, we'll say vacation uh, photography, and then starting number one. So this is a typical renaming sequence that we might use, kind of describing what it was, and then we'll rename all of our images. And I only rename the images that are actually finished. So I don't rename the rejects or anything else. I just select what's finished and rename all of them when I export it. So I have nice names with every single one of the images that I complete. So that's how you guys rename as well as set up renaming presets for your photos. Now there's several different areas inside of Lightroom where you guys have the option to rename images. You have the option to do it on import, you have the option to do it on export, uh, you have the option to do it right in Lightroom. So with every one of these places, you can choose a file, the file name when you're doing it. So if you, for example, want to rename upon import, you would go and create a rename preset and then just select that when you're importing. So it works the exact same way regardless of where you're doing it. All right, so I'm going to hit cancel to jump out of this. Just remember one last thing that we can rename as many photos as we want. We can do it by hitting shift and making a group selection by selecting groups in order. Uh, we can hold control and we can select a group of images that are out of order, just a sequence of our choice, command on a Mac, by the way. Uh, or we can select all images by hitting control A and renaming everything, command A on a Mac. And then again, we just hit F2 with whatever sequence we want and then we can rename and go through that process. So hopefully you guys are really comfortable with the renaming system. Let's go on to the next tutorial.